Welcome back. For decades, Egypt is doing and exerting the utmost efforts to maintain regional security, stability and peace. And President Abdel Fattah Sisi, our top diplomats, whether our current top diplomat or former top diplomats are doing their best, leading the Egyptian diplomacy to continue in the very same track, to pacify the situation in the Middle East, to reach a settlement for different crises, and of course on top of the list is the Palestinian cause. Supporting the Palestinian cause is part and parcel of our foreign affairs files in general. And for decades, it's not something new. To continue with this and to shed more light on efforts exerted by Egypt to reach a, a political solution to many regional crises, whether in Palestine, in Sudan, in Libya, in Yemen, we are going to tackle these latest efforts and meetings which took place whether by the president or by our uh, top diplomat, our foreign minister, Badr Abdel Ati. To shed more light on uh, the, these efforts, we are very much delighted to have with us uh, via phone Dr. Hassan Wagi, Professor of Political Science and our political analyst. Thank you very much for being with us, uh, Dr. Dr. Hassan, and a very good morning to you. You are most welcome. Good morning to you. Uh, sir, let's start with a meeting which took place recently as President Abdel Fattah Sisi received here in Cairo a U.S. delegation headed by Senator Johnny Ernest and they discussed a number of issues related to the security and stability of the Middle East region and particularly to the Israeli genocide war in Gaza. How do you see in general, before going into details, the ex extensive and intensified efforts exerted by Egypt since last October to try to find a peaceful solution for the Palestinian issue or for the Israeli genocide war in Gaza? Yes, uh, I think um, Egypt has, uh, has, has exerted a great deal of effort, has exerted uh, what we call uh, strategic patience, uh, not to be provoked and to try to to, to play its uh, historical role in uh, setting up stability uh, in, on the regional level and in this very uh, uh, crucial moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in this Middle East, which is being uh, Egypt is, is being surrounded by uh, conflicts everywhere. But Egypt is trying to uh, to solve all these conflicts, to to settle all these conflicts, and I think that there is a very good uh, uh, recognition by foreign powers, uh, the United States, the uh, European Union, and all uh, all powers in the world uh, are very well well informed about what what Egypt is trying to do uh, in this turmoil. the um, uh, will of the U.S. side to all the time have consultations with Egypt. I mean, I think in every and each visit by Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary uh, General, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, he visited the, the Middle East, I think, for nine or ten times since last October, and each time he visited Egypt. When you go to William Burns, um, when you go to senators like uh, this latest delegation, and all the time you are going to find contacts, whether even by a phone or by visits from top um, American officials <coughs> to Egypt, uh, continuous uh, summit talks between uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and his American counterpart um, Biden. How do you see this and how do you see this situation or this stance from the American side? Yes, uh, this congressional uh, delegate uh, is very uh, powerful uh, that Egypt is playing an important role in uh, stabilizing the entire area. Uh, and another point that should be taken into account, which is the strategic relationship between Egypt and the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, every fair-minded person is very aware that um, Egypt in particular has gone through the path uh, of war and peace, and when it uh, when it when it comes to peace, Egypt signed an uh, uh, agreement between uh, Egypt and Israel that lasted for uh, now 
several decades now. Uh, that was with the help of uh, good, effective mediation by the United States of America. Mm. Um, Egypt is also aware that um, to make like what we call uh, a wake-up call for the American uh, mediators to play the mediation in a very fair-minded way and to try to see, to see that the results of good mediation and the good cooperation uh, would result in, in peace uh, and the stability for everyone. It will be win-win for, for everyone. Egypt is very aware of that. Uh, Americans who are fair-minded, uh, yes, uh, are aware of this. So I think that the uh, congressional uh, uh, members, the members of the Congress who came, uh, they came just for this particular point to enhance that the, the real impulse of the American people. They, they did like very much to say something about the American people, uh, that America is keen about playing uh, or trying to play a role that is really would serve the stability and the peace and would serve also the strategic relationship between Egypt and the United States. But, but sir, when, whenever Egypt, we are talking uh, about the uh, yeah. win -win. Yes. W the presidential elections year, uh, I, I think this is um, something which is having such a role or playing a big part of the American stance regarding what's going on in the Middle East. I mean, it's going to be used in the electoral campaign, whether by Trump or by Kamala Harris. True? Yes, and I think uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, the frame or the name of the, of the delegates, they are, they are talking about themselves as bipartisan, bipartisan delegation. Mm. What does this word or, or expression mean? It means that they are representing the two parties, the two major parties of the United States. Yeah. They represent the, 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 the real essence of the uh, entire American people, and they try to get this message uh, for Egypt to, to, to say that uh, Egypt is playing the role that is supposed to be played to enhance the stability and mediation, and they are trying to cooperate. But I hope that there should be much more cooperation uh, on the practical level and operationalized level so that we can end up this uh, kind of tension in the area and to get back to the uh, diplomatic tables, not uh, to go to, the, to, to further enhancing and uh, expanding the war in the area. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, the delegate is, uh, would succeed in, in, in getting yeah. the, his message across and in getting the, the message of the president back to the United States again, uh, where he said that uh, continuation of the current situation without coming to a solution uh, would be very dangerous for the entire world. If not for Here I should ask this question, sir, because uh, you know every time I'm honored to have you um, whether live in the studio or via phone, I would like to see the opportunity to speak to a man of linguistics who is uh, very much keen to analyze the discourse of uh, those who are talking because every word matters. And one of the important statements which were released by Kamala Harris recently when she said that if she is elected uh, next November as uh, the first female president of the United States of <coughs> America, she is going to continue with supporting Israel. But she also said that the Israeli war in Gaza or the Gaza war should stop now. Many people saw that this is a little bit contradictory and others would say no, it's not contradictory, she means what she's saying. How do you see these statements in, as a, a man of linguistics, as I said? Actually, the what we call double entenders and also uh, I think that uh, everybody, you know, this is uh, election statements uh, but I think every wise American diplomat would understand that uh, experience showed that uh, treaties and uh, uh, coming up uh, uh, with the concept of peace and operationalize it is for the sake of everyone. 
Mm. When when is very important uh, implementation of the two, solu two state solution is the most important thing because it really uh, addresses the radical uh, the radical solution to the problem. Uh, I think that uh, if we look at what President Carter did, I think Carter here should be highlighted. Carter, as an American diplomat, as an American president, former president, as a man of peace, really succeeded in, in, in trying to play. You know, he yeah, support Israel as much as you can, but here, when you are trying to play the mediator, try to play the, the, real, uh, the real effective mediation that really will end up the conflict for the sake of everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, American diplomats need to reconsider uh, the name of their uh, role. You know, uh, Carter, Carter, when he started the peace process, so you have to remember him uh, with good memory, uh, he said, I am the honest broker. Mm -hmm. And you know, the honest broker is doing something good for himself and for the two parties. Uh, so, uh, irrespective of uh, saying I am, I, 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 I support the, the state of Israel or I, I do not support it. it, this is not the point about he is now a mediator. He has to play the role of what Carter said, honest broker. Then there was development uh, when uh, George Bush, the father, the, the, the senior, yeah. uh, said uh, the role of the Americans is momentum giving party. Look, from honest broker to momentum giving party, there are some change. Mm -hmm. That uh, came to the situation when uh, Clinton said, uh, I am just a facilitator. And that reminded me with the President uh, Sadat, uh, may, rest, may God rest his soul, uh, when uh, Joseph Sisko told him America will play the role of uh, catalyst. And, you know, the language, the happy, happy language of President uh, that uh, may God rest his soul. He said, uh, I know uh, English quite well, but uh, what do you mean, uh, Rogers? Uh, Rogers. Mm. Uh, uh, by, what do you mean, Rogers, by catalyst? He said, uh, catalyst is, uh, is, uh, is a, a chemical terminology that really incites the interaction and then does nothing but that. So because at that time, sir, they really wanted peace. But, uh, and, but uh, today, let's, let's, I think that there are a lot of doubts regarding this because what's going on on the ground is very much me, different than let's, what let's, they say. And if not, um, me, on the 31st uh, of May, Joe Biden came with a proposal which he said that it's coming from the Israeli side and he just introducing it to uh, the international community to try to find a solution or to stop this madness which is taking place in Gaza. But until the moment, nothing is taking place. On the contrary, the Israeli aggression is moving from Tulkarm or from um, Deir el balah to Jenin, from Gaza to the West Bank, from the West Bank to uh, um, Hezbollah um, uh, sites in Lebanon. What is the purpose from the expansion of conflicts and struggles by Israel? I wanted to finish. I wanted to finish what I was talking about. When I said, uh, Sadat said, I disagree with the concept of catalyst. That meant that he added that he needed a real role of the United States. And here Carter came with that role. So that's what I wanted to continue and to, to complete my statement. And this is uh, would tell you uh, an answer about your uh, current question, which is, yes, if there is no good mediation, strong mediation, effective mediation uh, by the United States, I think that um, this is a very, very, very bad role to be played uh, for the sake of the Americans, for the sake of everyone, because I think that it is very important to uh, operationalize something uh, through the, the putting pressure on, on this and what is happening. What's happening is terrible humanitarian crisis, terrible uh, expansion of the war, uh, terrible challenge for the real Camp David Accord itself when they are, the, when the Israeli insist on having uh, to stay on the uh, Philadelphia um, uh, or Salah al-Din uh, uh, pathway. I think that, uh, yeah, 
the Americans should come to, 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 to play far more stronger role that would remind us with mediation, real mediation. Uh, and everything could be happy, could be solved by mediation, a strong mediation. And we have seen the experience with Egypt. And even we extended that to arbitration uh, when, when we restored Taba. I think that the Americans need, the message is the Americans need to reconsider the role in a way that would enhance peace in this area. Because the Israelis have gone too far. Amen to that, sir. And to continue what uh, the media reports were saying about uh, the Israeli uh, um, approval of having just a little small pause in uh, their Israeli brutal aggression, whether in uh, Gaza or in the West Bank, to give the opportunity for the WHO uh, or for the UN organization to have the inoculation campaign for polio, which returned back to Gaza or to Palestine in more, for the first time in more than 25 years, and the spread of the virus in nearby countries, it's going to be catastrophic. How do you see this also, sir? Uh, I think that uh, what is happening is uh, a terrible humanitarian disaster. Uh, everybody in the world is witnessing that uh, on the, the TV screens, uh, but um, the, there should be some far more global intervention, more global. And this was the president said, by the way. He, 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 he wanted the entire uh, world to help in getting this, uh, to get a stop on what's happening in Palestine. Uh, what is happening in Palestine is, as you said, is a genocidal war. It's uh, unbelievably, uh, uh, unbelievably ac accepted for anyone. And the continuation of that is jeopardizing the entire area, of course. Yeah. Also, yesterday, sir, there was a very important meeting which took place as uh, a foreign minister, Badr Abdel Ati, met with the board of directors of uh, the Egyptian Supreme Council for Foreign Affairs, headed by Ambassador uh, Arabi, uh, former uh, foreign minister, and they discussed a number of issues and a number of diplomatic efforts exerted by Egypt to reach a political settlement for many crises, by the way, not only the Palestinian one. And I consider that what we call soft diplomacy. How do you see our soft diplomacy and its role side by side our former diplomacy, whether had by the head of the state, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, or by our top diplomat, Badr Abdel Ati? Yes, uh, Egypt is operationalizing both uh, track one diplomacy as well as uh, track two diplomacy, or uh, as you wanted to describe it as uh, uh, soft diplomacy and formal diplomacy. Yes, I think that, uh, yes, Egypt is trying to do that. And I, I hope that there should be some kind of uh, uh, practicing of much more uh, um, deeper diplomacy with the entire world so as we can mobilize forces to, to help in uh, uh, pushing the whole thing to the right direction. We hope so, and we hope that we are going to reach uh, and to achieve on the ground this goal to pacify the situation in the Middle East and to reach political peaceful settlements for all the crises in the very near future for the best interest of all. Well, uh, Dr. Hassan Wagi, thank you very much for your input, sir, and have a very good day. Right after the short break, we are going to return back with more soft stage. <laughs> موطني موطني الجلال والجمال والسنان